Hey there, everybody. This is your travel guy, Jeff, and welcome back to That Travel Life. Today, I want to share with you why Singapore changed my life. On behalf of me and my better half, Michelle, we want to share with you our years of travel experience where we've cruised to and stayed in locations of vacation spots all around the world. On this channel, we do reviews, lists, and insights on locations we travel to and locations we have on our bucket list. We hope to upload at least one new video per week to help you in your travels, and we want to be your go-to channel to launch your adventures and travels throughout the world. Not only will we provide a wealth of content to assist you, we will also share links to other channels we use before we venture out around the world. If this sounds of interest to you, we kindly invite you to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of any new content. So, without any further ado, let's talk about five things you must see and do in Singapore. If you ask either Michelle or me where in the world we want to return, we're likely to quickly say Singapore. Singapore is a sovereign city-state in Southeast Asia, only one degree latitude north of the equator, and with its rich history, wealth of activities, and year-round warm weather, Singapore is a welcome location for tourists trying to escape frigid cold winters around the world. Surprisingly, Singapore has a healthy amount of outdoor activities for some place only 280 square miles in size. Now, that's a country smaller than the area of New York City. Well, the official language is English. That's pretty good for Americans here. Although you may hear Malaysian spoken practically everywhere, Fortunately, most everyone speaks English very well. Any business you frequent and any hotel chain, you will have no problem speaking fluent English. The currency is the Singapore dollar, and at the time of this video, the Singapore dollar equals about 70 cents to the American dollar. Now keep that in mind each time that you buy something there. I say all of this to assist you in your calculations, but be warned, Singapore can be more expensive than other locations in Southeast Asia. We spent more money there than other places like Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh City. But we also got a lot of enjoyment for our money. So with that said, let's get on to those five things we believe you must see and do in Singapore. Say sate. 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 Oh, yeah. Spend a day at Universal Studios on Sentosa Island. Sentosa Island is a part of Singapore and is one of 63 satellite islands and connected to the main island by car, bus, monorail, cable car, or foot. We opted for cable car because, well, I like cable cars and it seemed like the touristy thing to do at the time. Well, Universal Studios is the obvious draw to Sentosa, and at the time of this video, the price is a 79 Singapore dollars. Now remember, Singapore dollars are not quite equal to American dollars or U.S. dollars, uh, and that's for 13 or above age visitors. It's 41 if you're seniors like me, 60 and over, and it's 59 for 4 to 12 year olds, and it's free to anyone under the age of 4. But there's also plenty of free activities as well, like the beach, walking trails, the Sentosa Nature Discovery, or even walking on the Fort Salosa Skywalk. But at Universal Studios, you'll find most of the rides and enjoyment you've come to expect from Universal Studio theme parks. I'm a roller coaster fan. They have seven of them. Four. Visit Gardens by the Bay. Behind Marina Bay Sands, that's a hotel there I'll speak about later, you'll find 250 acres of the most beautiful gardens I've ever visited. We walked the skywalk, took in a vast view of the city, and enjoyed all the local flora. Sadly, we didn't get to visit the conservatories, but we'll certainly go the next time we're there. The conservatory greenhouse, known as Flower Dome, is the world's largest at three acres in size. But the smaller conservatory, known as Cloud Forest, is no slouch at two acres. Believe me when I say, if you love a nice stroll through beautiful gardens, gardens by the bay will, well, blow you away. Three! Eat satay at the Hawker Stands or Satay Street. Anthony Bourdain once said that before he came to Vietnam, food was like black and white pictures in the rest of the world compared to the color picture now in Vietnam. Michelle and I feel the same way about Singapore. 
Singapore is the street food capital of the world, and eating there changed my life. For the first time, I knew what food was supposed to taste like, and I knew how food was supposed to be enjoyed. How could I ever eat again at a fast food American joint after I'd eaten on Satay Street at an impromptu table, gnawing savory satay chicken off a stick? My God, I'd found nirvana. Bourdain went on to say, this is the way so many great meals in my life have been enjoyed. Sitting in the street, eating something out of a bowl that I'm not exactly sure what it is. Scooters going by, it's so delicious I feel like an animal. If you do nothing else in Singapore, eat satay at Satay Street or at a hawker stand. Do your research and go to any of these hawker centers with this in mind. If the line is long, get in it. There's a reason it's long, and you want what they got. If you'd like to leave a callback number, press 2. Drink a Singapore Sling, or 3, at Raffles. First created in 1915, the Singapore Sling is the national drink of Singapore and created at the Long Bar at Raffles Hotel by bartender Giam Tong Boon. It's rumored that the fruity drink was first created with a feminine flair to give the ladies something to drink that had the appearance of being non-alcoholic. During the time, it wasn't considered etiquette for women to drink alcohol in public. Personally, I think this was a massive marketing mistake, and now the famous bartender Mr. Boone did so as well. Needless to say, it was a massive success. Although the hotel was under renovation while we were there, it was our disappointment, as it was on our list, but should not be a problem now since the renovations have been completed on this classic hotel that dates back to 1887. Before we get to our number one thing you must see in Singapore, let's mention some of the other close calls for our list, but they might actually make your list. What about the Singapore Flyer? At 541 feet high, this ride is a previous world record holder. It's air conditioned, and it's a Ferris wheel. It's higher than the 443 feet London Eye, but just a tad lower than the 2021 record holder here in Vegas. It's a 550 feet, and it's called the Las Vegas High Roller. It's right downtown here where I live. Of course, leave it to Dubai in October of 2021 to eclipse them all at 820 feet high. If you'd like to add the Singapore Flyer to your itinerary, it's about a 30 or 40 minute long ride, and it's not very expensive. An adult ticket is just 33 Singapore dollars. And a child, just 21, seniors like me, we get to squeeze in at 24 Singapore dollars. Unfortunately, unlike Vegas, I didn't see a drinks package. But you can rent a private capsule for you and friends, uh, Singapore slings included, for just a measly 1,500 Singapore dollars or over a thousand bucks here in the United States. How about Marina Bay Sands? Remember, I told you I was going to talk about that. You might as well take this in while we're going to Gardens by the Bay. There's a good bar restaurant in the main lobby. We had a nice drink there. It's a great place for that refreshing beverage before or after your garden visit. Or maybe four or five before or four or five after. I forgot how we did it. Michelle and I want to stay at this hotel one day because of its iconic design at the top. It looks like a ship and it's connecting the three towers. The pool at the top is an infinity pool. And I really, really must get that stunning video and pick from the edge. Finally, Changi Airport. Can you believe it? An airport might actually make your list. This is not just any airport. That's right. The airport is just that stunning. It's really a small city with world-class shopping, local and global cuisine, gardens, wedding events, kids clubs, and even a butterfly habitat. If you travel through Changi Airport, make sure to plan a long layover just to see it all and dine at one of their many restaurants. And now, drum roll please, I give you our number one thing to see and do in Singapore. Visit the Merlion. But not just the Merlion, but everything around the Merlion at the Marina Bay. And we recommend also seeing at night and catching that fabulous Marina Bay Sands light show.
world-famous merlion is the official mascot of Singapore, and you will likely see it printed on so many souvenirs in so many places across the city. Well, what is it? It's a statue created in 1972 and moved to its current location in 2002 at Marina Bay. It's a mythical creature with the head of a lion and the body of a fish, with water spouting from the lion's mouth. The fish represents Singapore's history as a fishing village when it was called Timasek. The lion represents Singapore's original name, Singapore, meaning Lion City. That smaller cub merlion, at least it's considered its cub, it's pretty big on its own, and it's a great place to capture photos like this one. Well, there you have it, folks. Our five things we recommend seeing and doing in Singapore, our favorite city. If you've been to Singapore and you have some others that you've enjoyed, please leave a comment and we'll check them out the next time that we go. In the meantime, Michelle and I thank you ahead of time for subscribing and hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click that notification bell to be notified of the next video. And until then, we highly recommend these videos for other travel content. Thanks for watching and until next time, we bid you a fond adieu.